The AK-47 is better known as Kalashnikov, and uh, it's an iconic weapon. Well, it was not just iconic, it was a very popular weapon because it was so easy to use and easy to maintain. Also for those who manufactured uh, the AK-47. Do you think the AK-47 played a part in holding back social development? It depends on the conflict in some parts of Africa and other parts of the world today. Uh, the possession, the widespread possession of this weapon uh, has been a destabilizing force. At the same time, uh, the histories of many countries, as they work towards liberation or some form of uh, emancipation, uh, depended on being able to fight an armed struggle in which this weapon was very, very useful. So it's been very, very useful in liberation struggles. It's been less useful, let us say, in banditry after liberation has been won. Mikhail Kalashnikov mm. wasn't even an engineer. He was just a, an inventor. And in fact, the AK-47 is the result of a combination of different existing technologies. Yes, I think that sometimes bringing in an amateur who's not a specialist in weapon design can be very, very useful, bringing that kind of perspective. When you look at a lot of more recently designed assault rifles, for instance, many soldiers complain that they've been over-designed. So the Kalashnikov was lighter than most assault rifles because uh, you had an amateur who could not put too much specification into it. And what came out as a result was a very robust, very practical, no-nonsense weapon. Do you think that this idea of simplicity can be applied to other inventions that may have different uses? Well, I hope so. I think that the world really does appreciate things that are streamlined and easy to use. Uh, I know there's a great um, vogue for having things loaded up electronically, for instance, with as many functions, with as many apps as possible, for instance. But when you're working underneath emergency conditions, you want one or two things to respond very quickly and very well. And I think that when you're looking in terms of military usage, that's very, very important. But when you're looking at things also in normal civilian life, that like you can very easily over-specify the controls of a car, for instance. Uh, but there's only so many things that one driver can do at any one moment in time. There are only so many instruments that one driver can look at at any one moment in time. So keeping these things streamlined, I think, is a very, very valuable design and operational lesson. You think in the future there might be something else that takes the place of uh, a weapon as a symbol of liberation? When you look at the flag, for instance, rather the coat of arms, uh, the symbol that's on the flag, You've actually got three things. The Kalashnikov is one, uh, but then uh, a machine cog is another, and then an agricultural instrument uh, is another. So what they're talking about is the need to win liberation by violence, but also the need to build a liberated country in both agricultural and industrial efforts. So it's never going to be just one thing, uh, but I do think that the world has reached the point where it needs to search for symbols beyond those that are merely violent. Thank you.